The first step in constructing the Drago is to attach the recovery harness to the motor mount. Some people like to attach a full length recovery harness to the mount. However, what I've done in this case is use a small piece of Kevlar that I'll attach to the motor mount using epoxy and then I can attach my main harness uh, to the loop here on the Kevlar. I like to use a tubular nylon harness because it provides a little bit more stretch than the Kevlar does which makes it uh, the jolts a little bit easier on the parts. To fit the Kevlar onto the motor mount I've notched the forward centering ring right here and I've also broken the edges or rounded them so they're nice and smooth so there's no jagged edges that will be uh, digging into the Kevlar as I fly the rocket because once the Kevlar harness is in place here it's permanently attached. I've also added a couple knots that will be inside the motor mount behind the centering ring just in case the epoxy gives way I have one last chance with these knots to mechanically hold the recovery harness in place and save the booster. So once all the parts are cleaned all we need to do to prepare them for epoxy is to sand them with some 60 grit sandpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. And then I'll be cleaning the part with alcohol and the parts will be ready for epoxy. With the motor mount tube sanded, I added some masking tape on both sides and in the front and the rear to keep the epoxy from spilling into an areas where I don't want it. For the sides it would be where the fins attached and for the front and rear of course it's the front centering rings. Right now I just want to epoxy the Kevlar harness in place. Most of the build is going to be done using rocket epoxy which is a very strong epoxy. However for attaching the Kevlar I'm using Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy which flows a little bit better. Rocket epoxy is a little more pasty this is a little more liquidy. So with the epoxy heated up and mixed up already of course, I'm just going to lay it down right along the motor mount. About as equally as I can. I'll just use my popsicle stick here to spread it evenly. Try and get as much of a spread as I can, and once the Kevlar is down, I can mix up some more and come back and reinforce the joint that's already here. Right now, this is just going to get me started, and using the 30 minute epoxy gives me plenty of working time before it sets. So with the epoxy in place, simply lay down the Kevlar. Press it into position here. Try and push it down as much as you can so there are no air gaps or air bubbles. And then I'll get to work mixing up the second batch which will go on the top and out to the sides, which should really help lock in this Kevlar. And you'll notice that I haven't glued up the front yet, leaving, leaving the front alone right now. Once I glue on the front centering wearing, then I'll be reinforcing that area with more epoxy. Now that the epoxy's had a chance to cure on the Kevlar harness, it's time to epoxy the forward centering ring in position. I left some epoxy out of the forward area of the Kevlar harness because I wanted to make sure that I had a nice gluing surface for the centering ring. So what I've done here is added a layer of tape just to prevent the uh, rock epoxy from moving too far back and just keeping the area clean especially for where the fins are going to go later. I've mixed up some, rock, some rocket epoxy here. I'm just going to make a ring around the forward part of the motor mount. We'll attach the centering ring then I'm going to come back in and add fillets with the same batch of glue here. With the rocket epoxy layered on, it's time to put on the forward centering ring. It's important to know where the notch is for the Kevlar. And I'm just going to slide the forward centering ring on just enough 
so that there's enough motor mount in front of the centering ring to make a nice fillet. In this rocket, the motor mount's long enough that I won't be completely boxing the fins in with a centering ring on the front and the back of the fin tabs. So for alignment, it's not super critical. So all I really need to do is just eyeball the alignment of the forward centering ring. The aft centering ring is going to be a little bit more critical, but I'm going to use the motor retainer for a little help in that. With epoxy on the centering ring, a good way to keep the area clean is to slide the Kevlar harness in through the motor tube, and that'll help uh, keep the area clean and easier to work on. To create a fillet on the centering ring, I'm just going to use popsicle stick. This is the first time I've used rock epoxy and it's certainly a bit thicker in use than Bob Smith epoxy. It also has a little bit more odor so it's important to have good ventilation in your working area. Whatever extra rock epoxy I can pull off of one side I can smear onto the other side. And when I'm done with that I can come back through again with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol to clean up the area. The centering rings aren't very thick on this rocket, which would make one believe that there's only a small amount of gluing surface transferring the motor thrust to the rest of the body tube, but that's actually not the case. Since the fins are attached through the wall, there's a lot more gluing area that goes between the fins, the motor tube, and the body tube. So there's lots and lots of gluing surface for the thrust to transfer from the motor tube to the rest of the booster. When putting glue on the motor tube, it's important to keep glue out of the, the center of the motor tube because you may be flying a motor that's actually longer than the tube itself. So you don't want to have any glue blocking the path for the motor to extend past the forward end of the motor tube. I also don't want to get any glue on the outside of the forward centering ring because that would make it difficult to slide the forward centering ring into the body tube. Here's that paper towel with the rubbing alcohol. Just going to go through the inside of the motor tube here. Make sure all of the glue is well clear of it. I don't have any 75 millimeter motor hardware with me now, so there's no way to test how clean the, the motor tube is by sliding it through. So I'm going to have to do my best visually here just to make sure everything looks clean before I mount the motor tube inside the, the rocket body tube. So here we go, forward centering ring is on, fillets are applied. Now I'm going to set the motor mount tube upright and let the glue dry. According to the rock epoxy instructions, it should set in about 20 minutes or so. Once the fins are glued in place, I want to be able to have access between the body tube and the motor mount to apply internal fillets for the fins. What this means is, the rear centering ring is going to be uh, completely installed after the fins are put in place. However, I need the centering ring on the motor mount uh, when we install the motor mount to keep it centered as well as when the fins go on. I'm going to leave this in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack glue the centering ring onto the motor mount tube and to be able to get the centering ring back out I installed these screws that I can grab with some pliers and just yank. So I'm going to install this in place on the motor mount tube with just a few drops of medium CA and that will hold it uh, in place so I can set the depth of the motor mount tube perfectly and then after the fins are installed I can pull the centering ring out and have access to the fins. Later I can install the centering ring with rock epoxy. Before I install the motor mount I want to check the fit of the fins into the pre-cut fin slots. My previous uh, Wildman kit was a 29 millimeter uh, Punisher rocket and the fins fit actually a little bit loose into the slots. However, with this rocket, they don't fit at all. So, to fix that, I'm using a sanding block that has a thin edge and I'll just run the sanding block into the slots 
and then run them back and forth a little bit on each side until the fin fits nicely through. I don't want the fin too loose in the slot, but I don't want it too tight either because then the epoxy won't flow very well between the fin and the uh, body tube. So I'll spend some time cleaning up the, the fin slots and then I'm going to sand the inside of the body tube as well where the centering rings are going to attach to create a nice strong bond from the centering rings into the body tube. So just after a minute of sanding with the sanding block, grab the fin, check the fit, and it fits, fits perfectly. So only takes a couple minutes to clean up the fin slots, and then we can move on to sanding the inside of the body tube. With the fin slots all sanded, I ran some sandpaper on the outside of the body tube where the fin fillets are going to be. And I made my version of Lucille to sand the interior of the body tube where the centering rings are going to touch. And I'm also going to use it to sand the inside of the fin slots for a little extra strength in the uh, fin to the body tube internal fillets. Before installing the completed motor mount assembly, I'm going to draw a straight line going up the body tube centered between the fin slots. This will give me a straight line so I can drill holes for the rail buttons as well as a vent hole. To make the line nice and straight, I use a piece of aluminum angle stock. I've already found the center of the body tube between two fin slots and marked that location. So now I'm just going to set the angle stock on and draw a line out with my pencil like so. Then I'll continue the line all the way up to the forward end of the body tube where I can drill a vent hole. To locate the holes for the rail buttons and the vent, Start at each end. We have a rail button close to the bottom of the body tube and this will be inside of where the rear centering ring will be. The vent is going to be close to the top of the body tube, but you don't want to drill the vent hole where the coupler is going to be, so I just move the vent to about 10 inches back from the top of the body tube. Locating the upper rail button is up to the modeler on where they want to put it. The further up you put it, it creates more stability on the rail. However, once the upper rail button leaves the rail on launch, there's no more stability provided by the rail. Further down you go, creates more binding issues. So what I like to do is I like to locate the upper rail button at 1.5 calibers in front of the center of pressure of the rocket. That 1.5 caliber is the furthest rear center of gravity I want to see. So I know that when I load my rocket with the motor, if the rocket balances in front of the upper centering ring, I know it'll be stable for flight. Wildman has uh, not provided any instructions with the kit, but they have provided a uh, simulator file for Open Rocket and RockSim, and that shows the center of pressure for the rocket being 24 inches behind the top of the booster tube. So 1.5 calibers in front of that would be 6 inches in front of that, meaning 18 inches from the top of the booster tube to the 1.5 caliber mark. Fortunately I have an 18 inch ruler right here, so we'll just line that up and I'll make my mark for the upper rail button right there. That's where it's going to be. On this project I have two different types of rail button attachment methods. The bottom rail button is going to get the wood screw that'll self tap straight into the fiberglass and I'm going to use a little wood block backing for it to screw into. For the uh, upper rail button attachment, I don't like the, the attachment method to protrude very far into the area where the shock cord and the uh, parachute is going to be, so I, I like to use a weld nut. So this will be attached on the inside of the body tube. Point being that I'm going to have two different diameter holes depending on which rail button I'm going to use. But to get started, I'm going to start with the smallest hole possible and that'll prevent the drill bit from grabbing on the fiberglass and causing issues, possibly delamination. To make sure that my drill bit doesn't wander when I'm drilling the holes on the round tube, I'm just going to spin my razor blade here right on the mark and that'll create a nice little divot. I can also use a center punch, but I get worried about delamination on the inside of the fiberglass using the center punch. So what I'll do is I'll line up Just going to line up the blade here, just twirl it around a little bit, 
And that should make a nice little indentation to keep the drill bit centered. There we go, I have a pilot hole drilled. Then I can come back later and open that up to the final hole diameter. Okay, it's time to mount the motor mount into the body tube permanently here. As mentioned previously, I have the rear centering ring just tacked on with a couple of spots of medium CA. And I have the motor retainer in place just to help push the motor tube and centering ring all together as one into position. Since most of the uh, force of the motor mount going into the body tube is going to be through the fins, there's really not that much need for the, uh, the, for the joint to be very strong on the forward centering ring. So I've just mixed up a little bit of Bob Smith epoxy and I let it thicken up a little bit as well so it doesn't drip too much while inside of the body tube. I've measured out how far the forward centering ring is going to be and I've transferred that measurement over to my stick here just using a piece of tape so I know how far to put the stick into the body tube. You want to put the epoxy on the body tube on the inside and not on the centering ring so you don't smear the epoxy all through where the, uh, the fin slots are. So I'm, all I'm going to do right now is just put epoxy onto my carbon fiber stick here. Put that in the body tube and just spread it about as evenly as I can. Then all that's left to do is place the motor mount and let the epoxy cure. So like I said, there's really not going to be that much epoxy inside. All we're trying to do is hold the motor mount in place until we can get the fins into position and glue it on permanently. We also don't want too much epoxy on the forward centering ring because we don't want any epoxy to, to pool up and start dripping into the motor mount. It would be fixable if it happens, but it would be a, a real pain to do. There we go. I can feel that there's epoxy going all the way around on the inside of the body tube now. So all that's left to do is position the motor mount and make sure that the Kevlar harness isn't going to be in the way of one of the fin slots. And I'm going to position the motor mount so that the aft centering ring is just inside of the fin slots. So I know that the aft centering ring will make contact with the fins after I mount the fins. There I can just see a little bit of the aft centering ring in this fin slot. So I'm just going to rotate the body tube through, make sure I can see it in all three fin slots, which I can. And I know the aft centering ring is straight because I was pushing on it with the motor retainer. So with this in place, I'm going to set the body tube so that the Kevlar strip is on the top. So if there is any pooling of the epoxy, it's going to be on the other side so the Kevlar won't get caught up in the epoxy. One last check, since I know this is where the Kevlar strip is, through the fin slots to make sure there's nothing protruding and preventing the fin from seating all the way down on the motor mount. Then I'll just lock the body tube in position so it doesn't rotate. And we're good to go.